I envision a future based on my past stories, drawing lessons that I learned, values that I gained growing up in Mongolia. And there are two personal stories that I would like to share tonight. Story one. Growing up in Jarhansom of Damak, small town in the western part of Mongolia, I loved books. I found solace in books, especially those starting with Once Upon a Time. Who wouldn't love it? And when I was a third grader, I finished reading all the fairy tale books in our small children's section of the public library on the first floor. I mean, I can't read books three times. I wanted to upgrade. I wanted to go to, go to the second floor, which was reserved for grown-ups. But soon after, I managed to find my way to get into the second floor, befriending with the librarian ladies, becoming their 10-year-old assistant. Just to stay close with the books, just to be able to stay on the second floor, I became their assistant. I managed to memorize the location of every single book in the archive room so that I could be helpful for them, so that I could stay close to those books. And Hope Library gave me how to acquire knowledge. By opening the second floor to me, they showed me how to share that knowledge. And with my two other friends, two other partners in crime, Degi and Tikshe, we co-founded Unlock Podcast, which summarizes best-selling books around the world in one hour episode in our native language. Just to share that knowledge we acquire with the Mongolian young people. And within 20 months, we have delivered 54 episodes. That means 54 hours of talking on a podcast, featuring 51 best selling nonfiction books in psychology, in business in biography, in history, and even behavioral economics. Well, the lesson learned, we loved books. And even when we were busy investment banker in Sydney and management consultants in Tokyo, we chose to acquire that knowledge and share that knowledge with Mongolian young audience, Mongolian young people, who do not have resources and time, or maybe they just can't speak English, maybe they just can't read in English. Whatever the world is reading, we wanted to share that wealth of knowledge with them in their own language for free. If one child sitting in a hoft, inspired by listening to Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg, mission accomplished. The lesson learned here, whatever you do, wherever you are, however the challenge can be, you, can, you always have power to make a difference as you wish. It's a personal choice. It's a personal choice. And story number two, it's a very personal story. People often ask me about how I got into Harvard Business School. Uh, I think I shared that story quite a bit. But there is a part of, part of the story that I haven't really shared with many. And I would like to take this stage, this opportunity to share that story with you. Because it's a very deeply personal story to me. 
Everybody asks if my mom was happy when I got into Harvard. <laughs> well, let me tell you. She was very happy, especially when I showed her how Harvard ranked number one in the best universities rank. Well, the ranking mattered because our government awarded state tuition, state grants and loans for those Mongolian students who successfully enrolled into top 100 global universities around the world. Well, with my mom, with my dad, with my family support, I decided to apply because I still need to figure out that $100,000 gap in my two-year tuition at perhaps the most expensive school in the world. And then in my mind, I'm thinking, well, Nagi, you need to get this. School rank, number one in the world. Check. GMAT, nailed it. Check. Essay, hmm, pretty good, actually. <laughs> Done. Interview, the only outstanding part I just need to nail. And for some reason, I was still nervous. And the interview was about to take place next day. And then on my interview day, the entire family wanted to go there with me. Oh my God, <laughs> family, you know. So we arrived at the National University's main building where the interview was going to take place. And my parents wished me a luck, waited for me outside in the car. And then I was just, just trying to calm myself down, right? All right, Nagi, you nailed even tougher interviews with some of the world's best universities. Harvard Business School, check, enrolled. Wharton School of Business, hmm. I got the acceptance, check. Chicago Booth School of Business, hmm. done. Just going and just pass the last hurdle. Well, to my surprise, the interview took five minutes with three questions, very easy, fact-based questions and then I was asked to leave. And, uh, and my parents were excited about the results next day, probably more than I was. And the next day, again, the entire family came to check out the results. And then the, the list of ranked students was stamped on a door in the hallway of the National University's building. Of course, the entire family went there and quickly looked through my name. It was 100 students in the master's degree program. I looked for my name from top to bottom. I didn't get it. My name was somewhere in the bottom quarter. And my parents were most disappointed. Well, I was disappointed too but I was most appreciative for my dad, for my mom, at that moment. I didn't pay bribe, nor did I ask any help, somewhere, you know, someone in the high up to give me help. No. It was my family's conscious decision not to compromise our family value and integrity just to win that scholarship. No. 
I was so proud of my parents at that moment who chose to stand tall rather than go low. Yes, I was so proud of my mom, my dad, who, to stand, who chose to stand tall when they go low. Well, I got the loan, $100,000 loan, in the United States to finance that gap and successfully finished my school, summer 2015. Lesson learned here. Regardless of how hard it can be, regardless of how daunting the challenge can be, you always have power to make a choice and do it right. We always have power to make a personal choice and do things right. Because at the end of the day, that's what matters. That's the only thing that matters. And summer 2015, my entire family came for my graduation. And for that, because how much my mom, my dad has given me, I decided to write a small story as part of the Harvard Business School portrait project. And that, that was specifically dedicated from my mom. And that, that story ended up being one of the most retweeted stories in Harvard history. At least that's what Harvard Advancement Office told me. And if you love me and take this stage to share that story, share that poem, read that poem actually from my mom, who's sitting right there. <laughs> An apology for those who only speak English, because this is dedicated from my mom, I have to read it in Mongolian. Mini Eji. Boyn Sumin Zachin Gut, there's no one who got up, but the gates of Hatch, no house for a chuckage, Horn Town Kit Mitter, who lyric the Tatrajus Nasanachino. Boot Haran Ho is so chessent, the Hung Hugi Hagirin that were it was Rakita, Uvishinur, Lah and Rachat Snotasanachino. The King Harold Tinsent, Turigit it is Shofter Hatminta. We need to do a drug better him sure which art just not a son of channel. Chatoch person, Tanimin Tossusqui, Udrug Sitil. He touch person, Tanimin Tossusqui Hitler. Hatoch person, Tanimin Hitzich Kanka good session. Namak Udn't Shumbuch. Osnt schon bitte murut hit men. Und sin, ob die Kassrohatik det hit men. Urgelt, altangat sat men gibt bald Thank you very much. <laughs>